we're going to do her bio signature on here. Most of the time when people get their body fat taken, the coach, the trainer, the doctor will just tell them, okay, you're 14%. That doesn't really mean anything. Over the past 25 years working with athletes, we've collected a lot of data. And usually we only have an athlete for a very, very short period of time during the off-season, 12 weeks. So we have to reduce their body fat in a very, very fast fast matter. So we develop a system over the past 25 years where you cannot spot reduce when you exercise. So when you do abdominal sit-ups, it will not pull the body fat off your stomach area. Okay? At that time you could be pulling body fat from your chest, your kneecap, and your big toe to do this movement. Okay? You can spot reduce by manipulating hormones within your body through nutrition, through exercise, and through supplementation. So we'll go through all the sites that we take, and when I go through each one, we'll show the difference hormonally, how we can change that. First one we take here is the chin. Go ahead and put your chin down a little right there. Good. 6.2. Now I'm going to take your cheek. Now the chin and the cheek are just overall measurements. They don't indicate any hormones, but they will be the first ones to change. So if we prescribe programs, 6.4. Nutritional supplementation programs, if these aren't going down within four weeks, then we make dramatic changes to our program. Five point two. Straighten that arm out. The tricep is nineteen. Just by doing this we can diagnose a lot of thyroid issues and then get right them over to a medical doctor to get this supervised. Here's is normal at 4.6. People that want to spot reduce just on, on the love handles, this is a blood sugar regulation site. Yeah. Okay? If this was high in a person, it would be an indicator they would be very carb intolerant. So their ability to tolerate breads, grains, cereals. We do not necessarily prescribe low carbohydrate diets if you don't have to. But there's a lot of people that genetically they don't have the ability to tolerate those type of foods. And we can tell by the indicator of here and then a genetic code back here that will indicate that. We can also prescribe different exercise programs, diet, supplementation that will help specifically target that site too. 17.4, okay. The umbilicus is a stress site. So it's a it, it's cortisol uh, site, which is a hormone. So cortisone, for example, if you're being chased by a lion, okay, cortisol would raise because you're under stress, okay, mm -hmm. and you would run faster, okay. Mm -hmm. It's also a fat storing hormone, mm -hmm. okay. So a lot of people that are under physical, mental, emotional, inflammation, pain, will have a tendency to store body fat in that site. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it can also be a dietary factor where if they're fat through their suprarelic and they're fat through the umbilicus, that usually has to do with a lot of intolerance of carbohydrates processed foods, sugar, stuff like that, where you're, you're fairly lean to the superrelic, so you have an elevated cortisol. This is the subscap site, and 7.8. This is a genetic indicator of intolerance for carbs. So a lot of times, if this is a high pinch in somebody, we can ask their family history as far as heart disease, and usually if this is elevated, they will have a risk indicator for family heart disease. Now I'm going to take your kneecap here, which is four, and then I'm going to take medial calf. Seventeen. Her kneecap is, is is a good score. Her medial calf is another poor score. So this will indicate a low growth hormone IGF levels. Okay, which is a, which is an indicator of your sleep patterns. People that always stay up late at night, okay, because you, you produce most of your growth hormone at, at night time when you it's sleep. Tell me I need more rest. You need to go to bed earlier. Okay. okay. You need to go to bed earlier and do more work in the morning and that will decrease, actually help you decrease your belly fat, the okay. little bit of belly fat that you have, and will decrease that score in your calf. Based with Lauren's body fat, it came out to be about 16.5%, okay? Don't tell anybody. Which is correlated a little, a little bit higher than what she sees female, but she's very, very lean. Uh, most females that will come in, it will be relatively higher than that. But with her, we can get her down, what we think is healthy score for a female is roughly around 12 to 14%. Is a very, very good shape, healthy looking female. And she just needs a few spots to, a few places to spot reduce. 
primarily in her belly button and her calf, which are correlated to a lot of her sleep patterns because she doesn't own a business and she's up late night working and she misses out those important time hours of sleep. So what uh, Mike just also uh, did was dispel the myth that napping is for lazy people and that that is really an extremely, not only healthy thing, but um, can help you with your weight loss. Is that true? That is absolutely correct. A lot of people think that napping is lazy and unfortunately with everybody's busy lifestyles, we don't get a lot of chances to nap. But if you do get a free time to take a half hour, hour nap, no longer than an hour, it's definitely a good way to recharge your battery, catch up on a little sleep, and that will help with your weight loss.